Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on drum authoring for Heartstrings by Clara C. And in particular, we're going to be authoring the expert drum part. We always start by authoring the expert part first, which is going to be a note-for-note transcription of the song as closely as we possibly can within the limitations of the format. And then we go back through later and reduce for the easier difficulty levels, which will happen in uh, the next episode. So before I get into that, I just wanted to draw your attention to where the material is in the documentation that we'll be covering in this episode. So I'm going to click on Docs from the homepage of the Creator site, and then click on Authoring right here near the top. And then if I scroll down a little bit, I can see the links off to the various sections for the different instrument charting areas of the documentation. So I'll click on Drum Authoring, and then it begins walking you through how to author for drums difficulty level by difficulty level and uh, expert is up there at the top and then it'll go through what you need to do to thin out your gems for the easier and easier levels and I wanted you to be aware of where this is in the documentation because you'll constantly be referring to it and having other members of the community refer you back to it if you're having issues as you're going through play testing because probably one of the biggest things that we spend time on during testing is assessing how successfully we've reduced the song for the easier levels because there are some pretty hard and fast rules and then there are some things that are kind of subject to interpretation so that can be a lot of cause for debate so I just wanted you to know where this is. I actually find myself referring to this information so frequently especially when I get into doing my reductions that I went so far as to bookmark the pages for the individual instrument parts in the docs so that I can just quickly jump in there, check a rule and jump out but I'm a big nerd like that, so um, it's helpful. Anyway, so jumping back to Reaper, we're going to look at the drum part for the song. And one of the things I like about the nested tracks here in this Reaper template is it allows me to just shut down the parts I'm not even working on and kind of get them out of the way visually and just focus on the instrument that I'm working on. So again, if you'll remember when we originally set this up, we brought in our audio stems for the kick drum, the snare drum, and the kit mix, which contains um, the audio coming from all the other mics that they had on the drum kit for this song. So if I remember right, the drums come in around measure 11, so I'll just go ahead and scroll ahead, and you can actually see that happening in the wave. If I play the song together, it sounds like this. If I want to hit solo on this top um, parent track that contains all the other drum tracks, I can listen to just the drum arrangement played together. start to get a sense of it. And then if I want to go down and listen to the individual parts, um, starting with the kick drum, I'll just solo that track and listen to just that. And this is what we're going to be working off of as we actually start punching in the MIDI notes that will turn into the gems that you see on the note highway in Rock Band. So I'll come back here to where it starts. Open up the actual MIDI chart, which is completely blank right now, except for a handful of um, text events happening down here at the bottom, which we'll talk more about uh, as we get into the reductions and animations. And then there was a placeholder gem for each difficulty level as part of the template. And if you watched the last episode where we transferred the song over to Rock Band for the first time, you may have seen those come by uh, when we first started the song. So we'll go ahead and blow those away since there are no notes in the song at this stage um, and scroll ahead to measure 11. So measure 11 is where that first kick drum happens. And just taking a look at the left hand side here where we've got special labels for all these MIDI notes that we can use. Uh, the top we've got um, special notes for drum rolls and drum fills, which we'll talk more about later, as well as overdrive sections. 
and then MIDI notes for our Pro, uh, Pro Toms, which is a new feature in Rock Band 3, and solo markers. Then the actual core gems for the expert drum part are right here in this area. So I'm going to be um, putting a note on the kick, which is the orange gem, right down here uh, at the bottom of that section. And I'm going to zoom in just to make this a little bit easier to look at, so it's not tiny on your screen. But we've basically got a kick happening right there at the beginning of measure 11. And then what I'm going to do is punch in a few of these, and then we'll switch over to the RBN preview window, and you can actually get a rough sense of what that would look like in the game. So there's kind of a kick, kick snare pattern happening, so I'll punch this in for a few measures worth. So now I'll switch over and I'll listen to the snare. So the snare happens on the red pad on the drum kit. So we've got expert red labeled over here for where our snare hits are going to go. And you'll notice that this Reaper template has a color map that actually makes these MIDI notes match the color of uh, the drum pads and the guitar buttons that are uh, actually on the physical instruments that you play when you're playing the game. Now on this song, the drummer is playing a little bit of a soft snare roll in between some of these main hits. And what you'll sometimes do is you'll get into um, trying to author all of those, and then when you back out and listen to the full mix, you won't be able to hear those anymore. We call those ghost notes. And they're not really playable because the player can't hear what they're supposed to be playing. And if you end up doing that without realizing it, you'll start to get feedback from the testing community telling you to go in and take those notes out. Because we're really, what we're really after are notes that, um, that you can hear in the final mix. Now, if you uh, aren't sure whether you've got your notes happening on the right um, note and beat, you can actually turn on a MIDI tone that will play along with your notes and you can compare that with what you're hearing in the drum track and you'll be able to tell if you're right on or not. So I'm going to come up here to the drum track and hit this little effects button and um, we've got a plugin installed on this track as part of the template called Resynth and if I just check it then it will start playing a little um, woodblock tone along with each of the notes that I put in. So I don't know if you can hear that very well in this um, recording, but that basically gives you sort of an audio cue to let you know whether you're right on the money or not. So last, I'll take a listen to what else is going on with the drums and see if I can put some notes in for that. Should be the probably the hi-hat ride, ride pattern. You'll notice you can still kind of hear the kick and the snare bleeding through on these mics. That's because this is a whole bunch of other mics that were in the room that are picking those up. And you'll typically hear various combinations of instruments bleeding through to each other. Um, so it's not really anything to worry about. You're mainly just trying to get enough separation so that the game is able to mute out the parts that it needs to uh, when the player misses a note. So it starts off with a big crash right here on 11, measure the right beginning of measure 11. And that's um, played on the green pad typically when you're playing drums in rock band. And then it goes into um, that uh, hi-hat ride pattern which we would typically put on the yellow pad. So a drummer is going to be playing the snare with their left hand and then just keeping these yellow gems going with their right hand. And what I like to do if I get into a repeating pattern is just do kind of a copy-paste operation. 
So you can um, lasso a bunch of notes at one time if you like by right clicking the mouse and dragging it. You can also, just like if you were in a word processing program or anything else, you can click the first or last note and then shift click at the other end and you'll get everything in between as well. So I forgot this song is in 3-4 times, so I only need to get three notes at a time to do each of my measures. And then we'll just listen to it as we go and see if he's varying at all. So on this note here, you may notice that it actually sounds like he opens the hi-hat a little bit uh, with a foot pedal. There is no foot pedal for the hi-hat in Rock Band, so usually the way that we simulate that is we'll move off of the yellow pad and over onto the blue pad to give the player something different to do to kind of accentuate the fact that there's a change in the tone right there. So now that we've got a little bit of a drum pattern set up here, we can click over to one of the other effects that is installed as a plug-in on this track, which is called the RBN Preview window which will give you kind of a rough approximation of what players will see when they're playing the game. And that is essentially how you author for drums. The next thing that I'll show you how to do is put in your drum fills. Drum fills are related to overdrive in the game. Unlike the guitar and bass parts where you activate overdrive by just lifting up the guitar, the drummer actually has to hit a green gem that will pop up at the end of a drum fill section, and then that lets them deploy any overdrive that they've saved up by successfully nailing the um, overdrive sections that you put in. And you can't put the overdrive sections in until you know where the drum fill sections are. And you can't really put the drum fill sections in, which happen up here, until you finish charting the song. So I'll go ahead and edit out, finish authoring the expert part the way you just saw me doing here, and then when I come back, we'll put the drum fills in, and then we'll essentially be done with authoring for expert drums for hard strings. Hey baby, it's easy to believe.